let's go over a few facts about graphing on a coordinate plane that you might remember from previous years. To start with, we're going to talk about some vocabulary. You have previously graphed in a graph that looks like this. You'll learn in sixth grade that this is called quadrant one. And we have quite a few vocab words associated with this. The first is labeling our axes. This is our x-axis. It is the horizontal axis. This over here going up and down is the y-axis which is the vertical axis. Uh, a few other points, the point where they connect at zero, zero is called the origin, which means the starting point. And when we graph a point, we wanna put it in what's called an ordered pair. An ordered pair has parentheses, a comma in the middle, and goes in alphabetical order. So if you think about X and Y, if you sing the alphabet song A, B, C, D, E, F, G, X comes first, Y is after it. So we always have an ordered pair in the form X comma Y. We never ever see Y comma X. So let's look at a few points. Here I have graphed four points, and I want to know what the ordered pairs are that represent these points. So if I look at A, I'm always going to be starting with my x value. A is right above the 1. So I'm going to say my x value is 1, comma, my y value is 5. Close my parentheses, that is my ordered pair for point A. Notice that I have intervals of 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on my x-axis. You do not have to have intervals counting by 1s. You can have them counting by 2s or by 5s or by 100s. It just depends on the context of your problem. All right, let's go with number or point B. I'm looking at my x values first. Point B is over 7. And then I'm looking at my y values going up the vertical axis. B lines up with 30. So my ordered pair is 7, 30. For C, I have 5, 5. So this one, let's not get confused. We're still talking about the x and then the y, even though they're the same value. And for D, I just wanted to show you a little bit of a harder one. D lines up between 2 and 3. Now, don't think, well, can't have an answer there. There are numbers between 2 and 3. Specifically, D lines up halfway between them. So I could represent that in fraction or decimal form and say that my X value is 2 and a half, and my Y value is 20. We will talk much more about graphing on a coordinate plane during your sixth grade year. But just as a refresher, remember we always want to have, when we have a graph, we want to have tang. Tang stands for your graph should have a title, like practice graph. The title should normally depend on the context of your problem. Like if you're talking about puppies and how much food they eat. You might title your graph how much food a puppy eats. Something to tell the reader what it's about. A stands for axes. A single one of them is spelled like this. If there are more than one, plural, they're spelled like that. So you always want to label your x-axis and your y-axis. You also want to give them titles. So I would say puppies and food they eat. Since my graph now has some context, I'm gonna change my title to represent what I'm talking about. All right, next up, you wanna have numbers on your axes. You wanna set your intervals. That again depends on the context, so maybe we're only talking about a few puppies. So like one, 
two. We don't have 50 puppies that we have at home. Three, four, you wanna make sure they're spaced evenly. So you can see I made a mistake right there. I went one too far. I want two spaces between. That's just me setting up my context. Now maybe food they eat, we're measuring in cups. So I'll say, I'll count by twos here. Finally, the G stands for graph your points. So when you say, hey, I have uh, three puppies and altogether the three puppies eat 10 cups of food, you wanna make sure to graph it appropriately on your graph. And there's a quick refresher of graphing on the coordinate plane in the first quadrant.